Assalamualaikum um, In this video, I will explain uh, about chapter 1 Code BTS3133 Signals and Network So chapter 1, it will be uh, we, will, we will learn about introduction to signals and system But some of the sub chapter or sub topic in this chapter You have learned it in other courses such as uh, communication system design uh, and also some other mathematical course such as applied mathematics so in this chapter okay uh, there are six subtopics that will cover about the signals and system in brief and then uh, for the chapter one learning outcome uh, we hope or I hope that you should be able to identify each signal based on its characteristics and then write equation of elementary signal and draw its graph as well as to perform operation between two signals and lastly to solve signals convolution in time domain so it will cover the, the first cost outcome which is to identify the different types and operation of signals and use suitable Fourier techniques. So what is this? What is a signal? So I think some of you already know what is signal based on other course that you have learned before. So signal is actually a variable that carry information and it can be uh, various type of signals such as electric signals which has volt and ampere in electric circuit acoustic signals which is used um, in audio speech voice sounds and etc another one is video signals meaning that intensity variation in an image either it's a static image or moving image and another one is biological signal Actually, it's the sequence of bases in a gene or maybe um, nowadays we also have, we can have signal based on a wave taken from the brain or heart, which we call it as ECG or EEG. For the heart, it's the electrocardiogram and for the brain, it's the EEG. Uh, I'm, I'm not really uh, remember the, the full name, but yeah. EEG for brain, ECG for the uh, heart. Sorry. Okay, so what is a system? We know about the signal and now what is the system? So a system is actually uh, how to process the signal to become other signals or other information that is usable to be used. So for instance, we have an input signal and then we, go, we make the signal to go through a system and then come out as an output signal to be the response of the system that use the input signal. So it can be um, a block diagram that shows the signal flow and what happened with the signal in certain processes that we call as system. So next is the classification of signals and system. So make sure that you know the difference between signal and system. Signals basically can be classified or categorized in certain um, categories such as continuous time, discrete time, continuous value, discrete value, random and non-random. But for the system, it can be classified according to how a system interacts with the input signal applied to that system. Meaning that we need to know what is the input signal we're going to use to that system. So it can be a memory or memoryless system, causal or non-causal system, linear and non-linear system. I think this one you already uh, heard it in my com communication system design class. And then time invariant and time variant systems, linear and time invariant system or what we call as LTI. So for the first classification of signal, which is continuous time signal, or we call it as CT. So CT is continuous time signal. We use XT 
meaning that the domain of the this signal is time so t here is the time that we use as a domain so when we want to uh, represent this signal into a graph we should put it and plot it to be the x axis to be the time here and y axis to be the function of the signal so uh, the example of LCT signal is voltage, current, temperature, velocity and etc. So it can be time, I mean this example voltage, current, temperature, velocity can be on the uh, y axis uh, that plotted uh, towards time. So many physical systems operate in continuous time such as mass and spring and leaky tank. Next is the discrete, discrete time signal or DT discrete time so for the discrete time we do not use xt to represent the equation of the signal but we use as xn for uh, the, to represent the mathematical equation and this n is actually a number where time varies discreetly or what we call a sample so n here can be from zero uh, or even negative one negative two up to infinity okay but we want it to be um uh what call it uh, fixed to certain time varies or samples so example of dt signals is population dna based sequence and most of the time the digital signal that uh, we use can be represented in discrete time such as state machines that given the current input and current state and what is the next output and the next state so this uh, if we see on the example here the n represent uh, the sample how many samples that you use here so basically in this uh, graph we use n equal to 19 samples which from uh, sorry is actually 20 Oops, sorry, I need to uh, do, it's not 20, uh, 19, it's n equal to 20. Because why? When we calculate over here, we have 9 here and we have 10 over here and we also include 0 over here. So it's equal to 9, uh, sorry, 20. Okay, so the samples of this um, graph is actually 20 samples that use xn as the uh, y-axis. So, when we want to uh, see the continuous time CT versus discrete time DT signals, all right, see, we can, uh, actually this one, we, we it's just a uh, revision that you have learned this in other chapter, earlier, uh, sorry, earlier course. Uh, so, I don't think, this is quite difficult for you to understand so for continuous time basically we will use uh, in a real world as analog signal and for the discrete time uh, we want to use it if we have set of samples to see on the signal and it can be transmitted as digital signal that use discrete time to be represented 